All right, what's up, everybody? I am here with a legend of reality TV, one of my castmates, original castmates. This is the original I Love New York season one, I Love Money season one, Mr. Boston. Boston, man, what is going on? Long time no talk. Yeah, long time no talk. Everything's going pretty well on my end. How about on you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, as I was saying earlier, built myself a podcast studio, just having some fun going back, watching some old episodes with some uh, guys from the shows with some memorable moments, man. And uh, I wanted to bring you on. You know, last time you and I spoke was actually, what, at the Re I Love Money reunion 13, 12 years yeah. ago, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 2008. Yeah, then, yeah, at that, yeah, at that, yeah, at that reunion episode. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty crazy. You know, obviously, uh, we haven't even spoken about it at all. But, um, you know, you, you went out, you know, I trusted you and I love money. You threw the challenge, um, you know, you were on the team. We, we planned this out, and um, I thought the plan was we're going to get some other guys up for elimination. I see that it's you, Brandy C., who's harmless, and Destiny, who was with Entertainer, and I couldn't, you know, Frank, I couldn't mess that up, you know, so I had two choices. You were Brandy C., is what it came down to, man. And, uh, it, 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 I, you know, obviously it didn't work out. I would have loved to have you down there. We won, you know, somehow figured that out. But, um, you know, never meant anything by that, man. So just want to uh, apologize. No, you know? Yeah, no, it, it's okay. I, I just, you should have gotten rid of Brandy C. And she, she was like a waste of space. You should have just got rid of her. Well, it turned out to bite me because the girls, I thought I had them, you know, like on my side. But you never know who's on your side. I know. That, that, if you kept me around, I would have, you know, tried to help you out later on if, like, you were up for elimination or something. Yeah, yeah you never know, man. You live and you learn. But, uh so anyway, first things first, obviously we had lives to live after these shows. Um, I had a long road to where I'm at now. You were an accountant, uh, you had a good job going in. Tell me about the career kind of since the show and how you got derailed, if at all, and kind of, you know, how that's been for you. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I did, you know, I love New York, 2007. I love money, 2008. I was in one episode of another New York show, New York Goes to Work in 2009, where I boxed her. Um, that was the last time I had New York. Yeah. Yeah. I boxed, um, New York. It was a boxing challenge where she learned how to box and they invited, you know, me on the show because of my boxing with chance. They tried inviting pumpkin on. So pumpkin and New York, you know, could have a box. Oh, wow. Match. On New York's own um, show. She must not have even known about that. Pumpkin coming on. She wouldn't have been down yeah. for that. You know that. Right. She did not show up. So I was the one who, after like a day of training on the second day, actually got to box New York. She did not have chances boxing skills. I can assure you of that. <laughs> well, speaking of that, you know, the whole point of this and this uh, show that I got going on is to go back and watch clips and some right. crazy stuff. And um, obviously, there's a memorable clip of you that I can recall because I was in your corner and you and Chance actually got in the ring, got to box. I got to box Tango. We didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, that was crazy. That was an iconic moment. You ended up getting hit. You know what? We're just going to throw the clip on. We'll watch that for a second. And, uh, you know, we've got to weigh in on it, man. So roll. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And now the main event, Chess versus Mr. Bogdan. All right. I want to do more than teach Boston a lesson. I want to teach him to keep his mouth shut when it's time to. Don't be flapping off with the mouth because somebody in the streets just may knock you in it. This is a match everyone's been waiting for, John. Okay. Oh, boy. I am pumped. I got Eye the Tiger in my mind. I got my boxing gloves ready to go. I'm ready to land a couple of sweet punches on that sucker's face. Top gloves. Okay, ready? Uh, one is a clown and the other one is exactly. a I've never been hit in the face before, and it felt like an asteroid came crashing down on Earth. I mean, it was just the worst experience of my life. Just horrible. Fight! You gotta go, go! I cracked him 
no good time. He left his arms open. I didn't mean to take him over the, over the ropes, but I had to do what I had to do. He should have never stepped in the ring with your boy Chaz. That was his last chance. In my life, I ever seen him get knocked out of a ring like that. And his nose was gushing and everything, man. You okay? We want, I want you to elevate your head, sweetie. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's okay. So as I was laying there tangled in the ropes, I was just thinking, this is pretty good. I just got my ass kicked. There's no way New York is going to eliminate me tonight. I mean, she feels awful for me. And who knows? Maybe she'll be so pissed off at Chance for kicking my ass that she'll send his ass home tonight. I'm in yeah. your corner, right? So I guess the whole thing starts like we got to go back to the beginning. When did your and Chance's beef actually even start in the show? Well, it started on um, our first night there. Like I went over, I think, to talk to New York at that opening, you know, mixer thing. And I think Chance was already talking to her, but like he was going on and on for like 20 minutes. And I knew there was an elimination that night. So I got to, you know, get my time in. I'm not going to let him hit on her for like, the whole night. Yeah. Right. Right. My face, we'll have to work together later. Right. I can't believe it's only the first night and the guys are already fighting. Don't just come butting my That's business when I'm talking right, with you. So, you know, I kind of go in to like start talking to her and then Chance is like screaming at me. I'm like, whoa, I, you already had your time with her. I'm getting my time. So then I'm kind of, you know, screaming back at him. I mean, I wouldn't do that in real life, but like it's on the show. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. You turn it up, man. So, so I remember going back episode uh, four for me when the doghouse, man, the doghouse for me, right. I didn't know I was building a doghouse. We were into it. You know, we weren't yeah. around, but I remember <laughs> looking back because that's one of the most memorable episodes for me, at least for that night, obviously. But I saw you guys kind of beefing like all day and, and he was really pissed. And that's when they tried to cut your hair, actually. Pass me that wood right there, B. There we go. The wood. Ooh. Boston. This one over there. On the oh. ground. Come on, Boston, man. We ain't got no time for that. Right now, me and Rico are the best at the construction right now. Me and Rico are most hands-on. One room for the sex, one room for the other stuff. Maybe we can make it like a big hippie house with lots of different colors. The right. dog ain't smoking a bunch of weed in there. Boston wants a sex room and a weed room. The dog don't hit no blunts, man. It's a damn pooch. What the damn pooch look like kicking back blowing bleezies? How about bringing some ideas instead of that type of idea? Some of a dumbass Bring some idea right now. Yeah, f the house. Contribute, man. F the one. We really have no time for jokes, man. Chance is really pissed at me now, but he is so intimidated. What he doesn't realize is that no matter how much he flips out of me, I still don't know a damn thing about construction. So if I were him, I'd shut up and get back to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my, my skills, my handy skills at, like, you know, building stuff are not good. So I couldn't really contribute much because I was on the same team, you know, with Chance and White Boy. I could not contribute much. So I was letting them do it. They acted like they knew where to build a doghouse, but they didn't really because the doghouse that we ended up with that they – you know, it kind of sucked. It, it so the then, of course, step stool later on, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're blaming me for not trying, but well, you know, my skills were as bad as them. So even if I did try, the doghouse still would have sucked. <laughs> so yeah, and the beef kind of really got going that night after that. Yeah. Well, so going into reality TV, man, let's take it back even before it were in the house, right? We get we get right. casted and we're in the hotel, and we get an opportunity to come down for breakfast the day we're moving in the house. And that's when right. I get the chance to look around and see kind of what's up. What were your thoughts like kind of going in that room? Because I know how I felt. I mean, we walk into a room, there's 20 people. You see Romance, he's got his stunners on and like a jump, flight jumpsuit. Um, you know, yeah. you see Chance. <laughs> I mean, what are you thinking, man, walking into that room? Yeah, so it's funny. I had actually seen Romance um, the day before the first day of filming. Um, you know, like when we're all in that hotel. I, I remember my, my hotel room, you know, obviously we weren't allowed – to see each other yet or, or talk to each other since filming on started. I remember looking out my hotel room window and I could overlook the hotel swimming pool. I saw this guy who kind of, you know, had this crazy hair. He's kind of like, like walking around the pool, like talking on his cell phone. He, he just, he looked like an epic douchebag. I immediately knew 
he was going to be on the show because I think it was filmed in, you know, September. It was not like, you know, summertime, really. I immediately knew the guy, I immediately knew he was on the show. Yeah. And sure enough, it was romance. So I had my introduction to him the day before filming started. I, I didn't talk to him. I could just see him out the window, kind of acting like a little bit of a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, so you walk in the room now, so you've seen romance. Right. Like, what is the thought, though? I mean, you, you get these 20 guys. I'm, like, decent size, so I'm not really worried. I mean, there were some big guys. I think uh, Wood was pretty big. I mean, what's your thought walking into that thing? You think, like, stuff's going to go yeah, down, I, or you just into it? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I remember Wood was big. Um, that other guy, Jersey, also got eliminated first day. He was pretty big, yeah. Okay. What, was, what was your first impression of the 12-pack, man? Yeah, I remember you. I saw you. I'm like, well, he's definitely from New York or Jersey. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah well you know what i missed the calling you know i was a season late for owning you know tens of millions of dollars and being on jersey shore i guess you know but yeah i was thinking that exact same thing like if you knew about jersey shore when our show was filmed you probably would not have done our show and, and tried out for that show instead right i mean that makes sense but man our show's lived on for 14 years yeah. it's the biggest thing i've done i've done a bunch of little things and i'm still working on stuff but uh, even even daisy of love i mean it's like four to one when it comes to viewers between the two shows so it was crazy right. but let's jump back in man so you get handed boxing shorts i remember my 12 pack boxing shorts what right. is like what's the thought man we know we're probably going to fight i mean are you thinking like that we're gonna go fight or what yeah, yeah. So I got my box. Yes. Wait, so hold on. Um, did we get our boxing shorts? Oh, yeah. On the first day of the show, right? I don't think. No, no. We had our own boxing shorts. Mine had a 12 pack across. You had Mr. Oh, really? Embroidered across the truck. Right. We got them like during the announcement of that day, like that morning. And then we we're oh, like okay. trying to guess what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I got the boxing shorts. I mean, I immediately knew we were going to box. And since my arch nemesis was Chance, I knew producers were, were obviously going to have me box Chance. So you knew that. We get a little warm up. I get, I get in the ring. I think, I think you went after Tango and myself. I think you guys went last. Maybe you didn't. They made it look that last. way. However, it yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, last. It was first either you and Tango or Real and oh, White Real, Boy. And Real and White Boy, and then the Real gets knocked down. But you get, you, get the, you get in the ring. I'm in your corner. You know, like, yeah. you and I, people probably don't realize this. I mean, actually, we worked out in the mornings. You know, like, you and I were kind of just doing our thing. You're a northerner. Um, you know, even though you're probably a Red Sox fan, I'm a Yankees guy. So, you know, well, we got those differences. But, um, I mean, you obviously have not boxed before or anything like that. You know, I mean, you and I talked and we were like, hey, just stick, stick. You know, you get in the ring and just start sticking. So, I mean, at this point, you get in the ring. I mean, is that the game plan? Like, what's your approach here to start working on to on, on Yeah, so oh, I, I had never boxed before. I mean, I, I had seen boxing on TV, but I had never done it myself. So, I didn't – I had no clue about, like, how to box whatsoever. So, I get in the ring, but – I honestly didn't think it would go as bad as it did because, like, I'm skinny, but so is Chance. I'm like, like, how right. bad could this go? Well, as soon as we get in, like, he's he was a lot stronger than he walked. He was skinny, but yeah. he was strong. He played basketball. He was somewhat athletic, you know. Yeah. But, I so mean, he's a, yeah. you see, it couldn't go any bad. Like, it, right. <laughs> before it turned for the worst, I remember sitting there, jab, jab. For some reason, I just don't remember, you really weren't working the jabs. And I know it's like, you know, you actually got to throw it, you know, but he's coming at you. He's got to be stinging you and you start got to want to sting back. I think you started throwing back towards the end a little bit. Right. Yeah, I did get, I, I remember I threw a couple punches. I don't think I landed on him. I think he had his gloves, you know, up. up they were like probably real, like short, just kind of right. testing the waters. But yeah, so I was just kind of like boxing, you know, just kind of boxing. Well, you know they're not just going to let you sit there and, and, and right. tap at each other. So sooner or later, someone's got to do something. Yeah. And then I don't even, like, it happens so fast, the punch. I, I don't, like, all I remember, I, I, I was in the ring. It wasn't going that well, but it wasn't going terrible. And, and then I, I just remember taking this punch, and I, like, flew over the ropes. And either you or Tango luckily caught me. Otherwise, it would have, like, landed straight on my head. Oh, my, yeah, I was right under you. And then you started bleeding. But that's not, like, that's, like, an impossible scenario. Like, I don't, I've watched plenty of boxing matches. That's, like, a one in millions uh, scenario for you to end up in momentum going backwards, punched over the ring. I mean, it was crazy how it played out. Obviously, right. you are right. I mean, Chance isn't killing anybody. But, uh, you know, sooner or later, was that the night? You didn't go home that night, though. You ended up going 
the next round was it? I no, I, no, yeah. Well, I went home the next night, yeah. I was so nervous because it was one chain, not only that, how can Boston beat me after I done beat his ass today? Not only that, how can Boston beat me? Mr. Boston, you're a great man. But above all that, you are a fighter. You're a wonderful man. And you're going to make someone just a bomb-ass husband one day. I would just love it if you just can come to me and give me some true love. Boston had to leave because he was taking a beat down from these guys every single day. But also, I knew in my heart that I would never end up with Mr. Boston. Oh, is he, baby? I know. You had a hard choice to make, I know. And guys, I just want to let you know that he is the best kisser in this house, and it's hard for me to let that go. I'm definitely disappointed that I'm going home tonight, but I do feel that if New York had chosen to sleep with me last night and she discovered just how good Boston guys are in bed, I would not be going home anytime soon. Oh, so that was it? Yeah, yeah. I thought I would get some sympathy points with her, but apparently not. You know, I got knocked out of the boxing ring. Maybe she wanted more of like a, you know, like, like a tough guy. So as soon as I got knocked out, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt, man. It doesn't hurt. But it looked like you guys were kind of feeling each other a little bit. Like, I mean, I know that in my mind I had other things going on and girls that I was dating or that I liked. And, you know, so for me, I was not really in the game 100%. I mean, what about yourself? You came on there single, like really thinking you could try to make something happen. Obviously, it's TV, but I mean, no. was there any attraction? I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so honestly, I had only seen – I hadn't even really seen, like, the first two seasons of – um, flavor of love before our show. I think I'd seen like half of one episode. That's yeah, me, it. So, same with me, man. I knew not. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, I don't even think they told us who we were competing over for until like three days before filming started right. or something. Yeah. But I remember you guys on the couch, kind of like when you first kissed, you said, I think it's time for the kiss and you went in for the uh, kiss. I mean, right. you know, it looked looking back at it. Then you went on the shoulder, the belly. I was like, Hey, Boston's into it, man. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as soon as I met her, I mean, she, she was being nicer to me than the other guys because, you know, the other guys are acting a little more rough around the edges. So she's going to act rough around them. But she's like, uh, I'm, I'm going to go easy on Mr. Boston. Yeah, yeah you, you made it. But yeah, I, I thought there was a little bit of chemistry. I never thought I was going to like win the show, but I did think there was a little bit of chemistry. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I could see. I wish I had a little more because I look at it now. Like now we're in our later 30s. She was in her 20s at the time. So I look at her now and I'm kind of like, I could have probably played along more like now if I was single, um, you know, and really, you know, if I knew what I was getting into, we had no clue. And, and I was 23 years old, kind of just been going out to clubs, looking at the Jersey, New York City girls. So it was a little different vibe for me all in, but uh, you know, things change, man. So what the show comes out, we go home, show airs, man. What is your family and parents reaction to the show in general? Cause this is something like you and I've never. Done. Right. So my parents kind of thought the show was trashy, obviously, but wow. they thought I came across like the smartest guy in the show. So they're like, well, it was a trashy show, but at least our son came off pretty smart. <laughs> okay. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, my mom was into it like a little, she would go to like the Walmart and be like, Oh, you know, my son 12 pack. Oh, do I get 15% off? I mean, she would drop it wherever she could get like 10% off, honestly. Right. But I know that afterwards, every, we were all looking to do our thing. It was a big show. We had millions of viewers, followers. I wish Instagram what it was then because, you know, I yeah. mean, who knows? I mean, we're talking millions of probably people that we would have had on our accounts and all right. that. But, oh, yeah. Well, you know, it was doing? MySpace back then, but MySpace back then was not nearly as popular as like Instagram now. Right. I got to like almost 100K on MySpace and then it just went right. disappeared one day and it was worthless. Yeah. And then Twitter, everything to build up years later is, is harder. And then yeah, hey, it takes kids, a while. So I wasn't really into it. You know, I do regret, you know, like not wanting to follow that a little bit. I mean, when we think of what we had access to at the time and we're doing our thing now, having fun and I'm just doing it because I enjoy it. I want to film and just put stuff out there because I enjoy it, but it could have been a lot differently. I mean, how do you think you see things if you could change 
from the time you left filming that final day of I Love New York till now, what would you do differently? I mean, what path would you be on if you could do it your way? Yeah, so um, what I would probably do differently on the show, like in order to, to, not, to not get eliminated when I did, I would, have, um, I would have been in better shape going into the show and practice boxing too. So I, I, I don't think I would have beat Chance, but I, you know, getting knocked out of the ring was like embarrassing. My head hurt the rest of the day. So I definitely would have trained beforehand or, or even just like, like, you know, the downtime during the show, just kind of throw some jabs and that kind of thing, practice my moves. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you had like six months right. practice sparring before going in, you yeah. would feel pretty good. You would have looked fine out there. But okay, so we can't change what we did. And now the show's right. over. And now we can, let's imagine we can go back and change how you would have prepared for the show airing, what you would have done differently over the last couple of years to where you're at now. I mean, or would you have done nothing? I mean, what would you have done since the film? Yeah, so I probably, um, going into the show, like before the show, what would I have done differently? Well, I would not have picked my nose on the show because, you know, when they showed that on the show, it was embarrassing. So I would have, like, told myself beforehand, only do that, like, when you're in the bathroom, the bathroom yeah. away from the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Aside from that stuff, I'm talking down, I'm talking future, like, like where you're at today in your life. I mean, we haven't even talked about that. Why don't we, let's get into that a little bit. Are you still working at the accounting firm? Are you doing your thing there? Are you into TV? I heard you and Tango were trying to work on a project. Like, what were you really, what would you love to be doing right now if you had the choice? And what are you doing, man? I didn't even ask. Yeah, so I am an accountant now in Boston. I, I have a girlfriend too. So yeah, nice. that's basically, um, you know, I'm not married or anything. I know a lot of the guys from the show, I think yourself included, are married with kids. I'm not at that point, but you know, I have a girlfriend, so that's cool. Um, I mean, I'm pretty good at accounting. Obviously, like, I would have preferred, you know, if, like, the reality TV went as well as Jersey Shore, so all of us are making millions of dollars and, like, more and more seasons there. Because, um, you see, I think, it, I think it's a mistake to go on an elimination-style reality show because then if you get eliminated early, like, you're only in a few episodes, it's better to go in one of these series, you know, reality shows where it's, like, the same people in every – episode you know like jersey shore like real housewives because then like as each season goes on you can really build up a huge following and get like you know endorsement deals and all that yeah, yeah. i mean i agree that's i would give that advice to anyone trying to get on these shows for sure like that's what you want to look for but you know i mean we i look even past all that like do you go out and produce it yourself do you have to write it do you have to come up with the idea i mean you can get lucky very rarely but for where we're at you know i'm looking at it like so someone's got to come up with a great idea and it's got to work out, you know, as well. So I'd love, we can't go back now and like fist pump and, you know, do the Jersey Shore thing because unless you were willing, I mean, I don't think I could go out and drink like I used to whatsoever. I mean, I'd be done. You wouldn't see me for three episodes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But um, so anyway, I appreciate you having me on, Mr. Boston, man, or I, <laughs> you having me on, man. I appreciate, I appreciate you, you having on. me on. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> It's just a treat the same way here, man. We haven't talked in forever. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So uh, I do think uh, Heat and I, he's actually been in touch. You know, we've been talking. We're thinking about doing something for the reunion. And we haven't even talked about the reunion at all. I didn't even get invited to this show. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, how early did you get, like, the call about this? How long ago? I got a call about um, initially, probably like in August, you know, I got an email asking from like a guy at VH1 asking if I'd be interested. And of course, I tell him, if you pay me, I'm interested. I'm not doing anything for free. Yeah, we got screwed. Um, yeah, yeah. So then he emailed back a couple weeks later to say that enough guys from the show did want to do it. So they were going to go through with it. But then he asked, like, would I be comfortable flying into LA? Or did I want to, you know, like just like call in through Zoom over the show? And I said, yeah, I would fly in because they were going to put me up in a nice Hollywood hotel for a whole week, you know, in order to um, properly abide by like COVID protocols. And yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, I was shocked. I was a little surprised. I realized because there's two seasons and I don't really fit in New York's like love story at all. I mean, obviously yourself, <laughs> maybe not, not either, but you know, I mean, I pretty much said like I wasn't there for her towards the end and, you know, so I could see why I wouldn't be part of this, but you know, I was a little surprised. Um, 
I mean, who were you surprised that weren't there or were that you when you when you got? Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. What was the question again? So basically, when you got to the reunion, because I don't know anything about this yet, I'm going to watch it for the first time when it comes out. Obviously, as we all did on our shows anyway. But who were you surprised not to see at the reunion? Yeah, so I was surprised, well, I can't really say too much, but um, there was a major character from our season who should have been there, but was not there. Okay, from our season. I can't say, I can't say his name, but he should have been there, he was not there. Wow, that screws um, yeah. up the plans a little. Yeah, so like in the commercial for the show that's on now, um, you can see me and Tango shows up and um, the entertainer from season two. Um a couple other guys who call went over Zoom and, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. And Sister Patterson was there creating lots of drama, as you can expect. Oh, my gosh. I saw yeah, she I, looked, uh, I don't want to talk badly about someone that's never said a bad thing about me, but, man, she looked like she put on, uh, what, 50 pounds minimum? I was thinking the same thing. Her face looked the same, but the body, like, yeah, big. It happens. Well, man, I'm looking forward to the reunion. Wish I could have been on, but... I, I, I was tempted to ask her how her dating life is going nowadays. <laughs> but oh, I my gosh. And even New York. I mean, I saw the makeup job and everything she had going on. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't want to say anything bad because I, you know, I never had bad things to say about New York or anyone, really. But, uh, right. man, I wasn't, I wasn't impressed. But we're getting older. You know, she's a little older than us uh, as well. But anyway, Boston, man. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to check out the reunion. Hopefully, we got another 10 years of uh, milk in this thing. You know, that'd be great. I hope so.